everybody so we're back here this will be the first day that i don't have any schoolwork and can just focus on just modding so i did figure out since the last video i made which was the one talking about icbm its future and kind of all that stuff uh that i do actually have more than just a week so my next classes do not start until 9 4 is what it looks like so they start right here so that means we have one two three four weeks to pretty much do whatever we want uh, that being said, this last week I'm probably going to have to do prep work for the following week, but you get the idea. There's three weeks of solid work we can do here with very little interruption of having to worry about anything else, and hopefully little interruption of my dog barking. I mean, she's over here passed out because I, I took her for a walk outside, played with her, did stuff like that. So, um, or rather, the walk was she escaped and I chased her around the yard, but same thing. Anyways, uh, so I did a stream a couple times here, I believe last week or something, where we worked on an EMP gun for a client commission. We also made a grenade, of course, and then uh, I kind of ended the stream early as I had to go and didn't quite finish the grenade. The plan is for today, I mean, just to kind of take it simple, after all, I kind of want to do some celebration here later that the semester is finally over, and go do things like maybe set up the seven-day server or maybe get one of the Minecraft servers running. Um... So we're going to just focus on getting the EMP gun working, which is this little thing. looks kind of nice, a little hard to see through, but it's cool. I, I like it. Uh, and then we're going to get the grenade working. So right now the grenade pretty much doesn't seem to act like a grenade. It's got a little too much velocity. Uh, that needs to be fixed. And then the EMP gun's performance is a little slacking, and we need to make it chargeable. So we're going to have to recode the EMP gun. We're going to have to code effects so that way when I shoot... Uh, machinery they turn off. Uh, the idea would be to drain power in them, but uh, we want to do a stun effect for some of the machines. Uh, in particular, if I can find everything here, we want to have this machine here, which is a generator, turn off for some period of time. Then we want, if I can find the other mod that's in here, I'm a little, did not plan this episode out at all, so uh, we want this little guy which is powered by the generator, to also be knocked out temporarily. Uh, the main primary goal is to knock out the sentry guns with this. This is what this EMP gun is designed for. The client who commissioned it, he wants to be able to turn a, a sentry gun off. Uh, I don't know what amount of time he wants to have it turned off, so we'll do configurations for that. But the code for the EMP behavior is going to be built into Volt's engine and be built into uh, armory mods. So this code is going to be recycled for everything. It's the reason why I'm not charging him an exaggerated amount of... I'm actually barely charging him for any of this stuff. He's pretty much paying for pennies on the dollar. But, uh... Yeah, so we want to just make these stunnable, and then this will work for all machines. So this way, when an ICBM uh, EMP goes off, uh, it will be able to work on anything, and we're going to build some APIs up for that to make that function. Because right now, what happens is if I turn this generator on, which I think I need fuel for this, we have fuel in here. If there's fuel present, this generator will use actual gasoline fuel. If it's not, it will use lava. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. Apparently we've got tankers in here. I keep forgetting about that. So yeah, we don't have uh, that in here. So we're going to use uh, a lava bucket, which is at the top. And then we'll... Oh, that, uh, that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't just find a, a random bug. I think it's uh, me trying to work on the bucket feed mechanic where you can right click it with a bucket. There we go. So it's turned on, and these guys now have power over here, ignoring how loud this is, because, well, audio effects for the win. So let's get some ammo for this guy. So it uses minigun ammo, of course. Uh, okay, those are battery slots, and here's the ammo slots. I don't remember if the client even cared about the battery slots. But what would happen is if when I EMP these, they don't turn off. So they did lose power. It's really hard to tell this, but they did probably lose power for a micro amount of time. About probably one tick before the generator pumped them back up full of power. The EMP gun's cool. It will drain power off of things. We know it will work on these guys over here and completely remove their power. But when you have a continuous power system where you're constantly charging something, it's meaningless. You talk cut the power for a couple seconds, so what we need to do, be able to do is stun machines. Uh, now, when it comes to modded machines from other mods, I'm not going to do much to them. Like, the best I can probably do is maybe make some AMS code that turns ticking behavior off on them, but that's going to backfire on some machines. There are some machines that have really weird behavior. Buildcraft is an example of this, where they have their own little tick thread system that actually does a lot of the work for their things. Uh, but... 
yeah, so let's get into that. So the the ideal, and I guess I'm going to have to kill off the game because there's no point in leaving it up. But the ideal is we want to go and make inside voltage an EMP behavior logic. Now this may already exist in some form of way because after all the 1.5 and 1.6 versions of ICBM had EMP logic built into them in order to allow any mod to describe how it wanted an EMP to behave. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and find the core, which is down probably at the bottom here. There it is. Uh, actually we want to look at the API. So the API is what I'm primarily look, wanting to look at. And there should be, or there was once upon a time, some EMP logic here. Now we've got a lot of junk in here. I actually have to go through here and clean this up at some point in time. There's a lot of stuff in here that isn't really used anymore. And I need to document everything that's in here. So that way when somebody comes in and uh, wants to make their own mods or wants to add support, they actually know what the hell this stuff does. Because right now, a lot of this stuff is only used for the interaction listeners, which we don't want. And we want some kind of EMP behavior. I removable, I removable. So yeah, there's nothing in here. It will be a tile-based system, I think, because we'll have to have a separate version for um, items. Which does item have one? I mean, there's listeners for there. There's energy, so there's I energy buffer item, I energy item. There's a difference between these two, I, I think. They're a bit old. Okay, so here's this version, which works very similar to the RF one. And yeah, those are just uh, how items are charged. Uh, this will need to be implemented on our EMP gun because the client wants to be able to stick this into a, some kind of machine and charge it up. Uh, so he wants to really limit how many times somebody can EMP. So I'm, it's looking like he wants to be able to have, only EMP four times, which means we're going to have to change the behavior of the weapon. Luckily, the laser guns work very similar to what I'm thinking of, so we'll get to that here. But first, we want to focus on EMP logic, then we'll worry about the ammo system later. Uh, we also need to get the grenade working, although I can do the grenade next week. Or Sunday. I mean, i got another day here before we start working on things. So yeah, I'm not seeing uh, EMP things. So what we want to do is, uh, I'm going to put this in energy because this is very energy type behavior. And this would be I... EMP item. Uh, actually, I don't know. EMP something. I don't want to call it an EMP item because when you call it an EMP item, you assume that the item itself is the EMP. What we want to do is um, make it more generic and make the name of the interface sound like you're receiving the EMP. EMP receiver, maybe? Because how, how EMPs work, there are basically electromagnetic pulses. You're sending so much energy through radio waves that when it hits the device, it overloads the circuitry. That's that essentially how it works. Uh, so anything will actually do this. Uh, it's not an electrostatic discharge. I actually do want to implement electrostatic discharges in items eventually where if you don't properly handle them you can break them but that's going to be a, a, off by default type of feature we'll do that another day so we need a name this is where uh, if i actually was streaming this would be a great opportunity to just ask the people watching but this is just a normal recorded video even though technically if somebody was on the stream right now and they typed into it, it the chat would pop up because i don't think you can turn that off properly actually i think i can turn it off i just i'm not gonna so, what we want to do well, technically, what we can do is make uh, an interface for energy reception. I voltage receiver. And the reason I'm thinking of this one is that it will technically work for the EMP. Um, so what we would have is we would have a public and get operating voltage. So this is how much how how many volts does the machine operate at? Um, Then we would need to 
well, this information is kind of worthless because this will be. I'm thinking of how to use this interface in the future because one of the plans of the uh, the universal energy system I make remaking and it, yeah, it sounds exactly like universal electricity, but the ideal is to have the option to build a realistic uh, energy network. This is something RF and uh, Forge Energy don't give you is that they give you just an energy interface, which it, having just the ability to go like, I want to add three energy or take three energy away is cool. That is exactly what you need for a power system if you just want to turn things on and off. But if you want more sophisticated behavior, you need more tools at your disposal. And this is one way to do it. Uh, so I'm trying to think of the best way to get it or operate it. Uh, this will be a node-based system as well, so you won't apply this interface uh, to your items and tiles. It will be applied to the node, technically. I'm actually going to let it be applied to the tile, though. Applied to tiles, no. Actually, this is an item. Applied to items that use voltage as part of their energy operation, as well as used for control over EMT damage and effects. Uh, I think I still need to kind of make just an interface for EMPs. I think it's what I'm looking for, that word. Yeah. Didn't quite do that right. Hmm. So we might want to come back to this eventually. But we, we would get the operating voltage. Then we would go, okay, uh, void on voltage applied. Int voltage and then we need, we would need a source in this. We would need a document stuff as well. So, uh, used, used for data feedback for players to show the recommended operating voltage of the device. Uh, most handheld devices would be like 3 volts, 6 volts, uh, 12 volts, maybe 15 at most. I, I guess there's a couple examples of like 25 volt batteries for drills and stuff. Uh, we actually, we could put a default on this, but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to force items to implement this, and I just forgot. If we're doing an item, we have to uh, pass in the item stack. Um, theoretically, I need to be implementing the capability system as early as possible for this. Uh, so for those who don't know what the capability system is and don't really know what modding is, uh, at some point in the version of Forge, they implemented a, a system that's designed to abstract and uh, encapsulate your data handling in which you can apply what's called a capability to an item, entity, or tile that goes, okay, I am capable of energy, I am capable of fluid, I am capable of voltage. And I'm th instead of thinking of like, well, it doesn't matter what I do here. Next week when we start the update, I got to convert this to the capability system because that's what the expectation is right now of doing everything. So what I might want to go ahead and do is kind of implement an early version of the capability system. Ah, man, that's going to that's gonna be hard. And the reason I say this is going to be hard is because right now how the capability system works is you pass in an item stack and go, okay, get the capability for this item stack, and you get all this cool little stuff, and it's, it's kind of nice, uh, but... I would have to do some legwork for that. I could do it though, so it's not like it's 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 uh, impossible. But my lack of knowledge right now on how the capability system works probably is just going to hinder development rather than uh, support development. As well, theoretically, I don't have to use the capability system. It is entirely optional. Um, it's just an expected standard now that user capability system, but I'll implement both here later. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do the uh, old version first, and then we'll just redesign the API later, because I doubt anybody's going to be using this before I, I do the update next week. So this will be short-lived. So we go on voltage applied, so we get the voltage, uh, enum facing, we want to know what the side is, 
and then we want to know what's connected to us. Uh, actually, you know what? Side's going to be worthless, uh, so we don't want that. Stack, stack, item voltage, object connection. Uh, let's not do it this way. Um, we want... We want this to actually be of significant importance. So we don't want to just pass in anything and then go rushing or let on what we're doing. Uh, we want to have an interface that actually has meaning behind it. And what it'll be would be like I voltage voltage uh, transmitter. I think it'll work. This will of course be an interface. And then that way we can kind of restrict the expectation on what this is. I'll go ahead and document this guy as well. Um, and we want to have a return for this. So at return uh, true if voltage can be applied as in the connection is in an internal connection exists for energy to flow. Uh, do not return false so this would be like if you made a shield device you would return here uh, examples returning false are no ability for external connection both wired or wireless. Uh, actually, that's a, that's an important distinction. Uh, Boolean wired. Okay, so we want to do that. Um, actually, hold on. This almost feels like this would be an internal system. I know this has been like 17 minutes or more of me just thinking this over. I should have designed this all, but we'll, we'll get progress here. So, we have the get method. We need some equivalent to set method. This is kind of similar to the set method, is like on voltage applied. We're going, okay, when is the voltage applied? What happens? Uh... I, I want to treat this as an action uh, called right before energy is transferred to the device. So this would be item. Let me make sure we copy this up here because we didn't do that up here. Uh, voltage level always positive. Uh, what is providing the voltage? Uh, the, this is more of just kind of like a sanity check system. Mainly for sanity, entity checks, and feedback should not be used as part of the actual voltage application. There's like very few cases when you really care what, how the voltage is being applied. Uh, so the, a great example of this is, say you had a wireless charger for your phone. Your phone doesn't really care what is providing the power to it. If it just so happened that the device could communicate to it, so if your wireless pad could communicate to your phone providing Wi-Fi or something, that is a different system and is not actually part of the voltage charging system. So when you're applying voltage through like a wireless coil type system or an EMP, the device that is receiving the energy has no clue what is giving it the energy. It only simply knows, okay, how much voltage am I being applied, how much current is being applied, uh, what frequency it's at, which is technically, I guess it's not your part of your, well, that is, that is part of your voltage. Your voltage is kind of, well, it's a pressure and at the same time it can be a, a frequency because you have 120 volts uh, AC, which is 60 hertz. Uh, I guess that would be separate. So 
it is a frequency. So you would actually need to know what your frequency was um, at some point. So that's something you could do it. Um, should not be used in part of the actual voltage calculation. Can be used to get uh, hertz if needed or other power data. So we got that set up. Uh, so we know what this uh, how it's going to work. So when a device goes to call it, how the call history should work is it goes, okay, can connect on voltage applied and then um, on or provide energy, I think is what it's called. So if you go to the I energy buffer, which is, well, that's a battery. That's not what I want. I want I energy provided, which also gives us the buffer. Um, so it is the, the buffer what we want. So we want to add energy to storage. So it would be um, add energy to storage. Uh, so on voltage applied, a few a few cases. Um, I need I need an enum for this. This is not uh, going to work. So we do need a handler for this guy to understand what happened. So we want an enum voltage result. So we want connected. Um, no connection destroyed and then canceled that'll work for the moment so this will be okay connection exists and power can flow no connection exists uh, we want device is destroyed. Device is destroyed due to voltage. And then we have a, a last one. So this will be like events blocked. Event or settings prevent the action. So this would be like, okay, I have a wireless charging system and I put it at the edge of my territory, for example. We have World Guard. And it goes and starts charging a device in somebody else's territory, but I don't have permission to transfer between those two. They don't, it won't allow it. There we go, make sure I put all the data there. So that way we have our thing. Uh, so this will be uh, method calls for using voltage. So you go, okay, can connect. Uh, does the device allow connection? On voltage applied, does the device allow voltage connections? Or did it get destroyed? From the connection. Uh, add energy to storage. Uh, actual energy transfer call. So the on voltage applied is where we're going to do our EMP. So what we're simply going to do is go, okay, the EMP generated such and such voltage or such and such um, induction on the device. Uh, at least that's how I'm kind of thinking of it. Let me let me do some uh, Google real quick. So uh, how does the EMP work. I need to double check my uh, facts here. EMP, et cetera, et cetera. I know we're using Wikipedia for this, but it should work. Uh, short burst of, of electromagnetic energy, such as the pulse originate, et cetera, et cetera. Interfa Interference is generally disruptive or damaging electron. The higher the energy level of the or a powerful EMP, such as lightning strike, can damage physical objects such as buildings, uh, air structure, et cetera. Yeah, I got it. Uh, I still feel like I need to implement a little better handling for this. Now I'm trying to think of the best behavior for this. Yeah, I'm gonna, to, to solve this problem, because there is a problem here, 
I, we've spent, spent this whole time making this interface, and this is part of like software development when you're thinking about it. How, how am I going to use this? How is somebody else going to use it? How are they going to think about this usage? What limitations are there and stuff? So what I, what I just tried to do here is I tried to make a very generic, broad range usage interface. So something that I could use on everything. But the problem is, is that an EMP doesn't just generate a really high voltage on the connection. It generates a really high voltage on a lot of the components in the device. This is the reason why devices get destroyed by an EMP is that, say I have a microchip board that's exposed, and I'm sitting in an electromagnetic wave and I'm hitting the whole board at once. I'm generating current on parts that shouldn't have current on them, and they may be backflowing in the wrong direction and everything else, and that backflow were too high of a current and everything else with that voltage, of course, because when you generate a current, you generate a pressure via voltage, you can destroy a device because like microchips, for example, can only take milliamps of voltage and that's where you, you break things. That's where uh, analog devices usually are more robust than uh, digital ones is because they can take a much higher voltage and current before they break, but they still break down. Um, and of course, you also can shield your components too. It's like uh, when I was working on power meters, they had all their stuff shielded to prevent from electromagnetic interference. Uh, not because of EMPs, but because somebody sitting with a Wi-Fi router next to the thing would fuck the device up. Uh, and you'd be surprised. I um, I heard stories of people had a Wi-Fi router on the opposite side of their power meter, and their power meter started recording the wrong voltage that was being generated by the the uh, or the wrong current. Because I'm really afraid this: the voltage is constant, but the current changes in your house. And it recorded the wrong current and charged somebody more because the device had interference on the microchips. Uh, uh, speaking of dogs uh, disrupting me, I was hoping she would. Take a nap and go lay down, but uh, yeah, she's gonna yip at me after the video. So I'm gonna take a short pause here, real quick, and uh, we'll return here in a second. Okay, let's get back into it. I was hoping when I put my dog out, I could take a break uh, and actually think over this, but uh, that was very short lived. If you can see the clock, it literally almost a minute passed. So, as I was saying, um, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, this this works when I want to go do my voltage device. So if I want to do, especially if I want to do support for IC2, because IC2 has that weird voltage system in it, this is really useful for that. Uh, so that way when I charge an item up, it goes, okay, you're doing a tier one voltage, tier two voltage, tier three voltage, et cetera, et cetera, which equates to, I think, 15 volts, 3264, 128 or something like that voltage. Or they got a weird system. I will figure it out. I, 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 their mod is one I have to really spend time adding support for it. And most people haven't really looked at their API and actually understood this. But their API is not designed to be forgiving on the power system. So what, what you would normally see with like RF is that when I give an RF machine power, it tells me exactly how much power it sucked out back. You give an IC2 machine power, it'll act like it ate all of that power. And you have to design your handling for an IC2, uh, the API, so that way you are checking multiple times how much power was actually transferred to the machines and how much they have and how much they gained. And you have to spend a lot of checks or else you'll have power disappear. And this was a problem we had with uh, UE and 1.5 and 1.6 is that uh, the IC2 support was shaky at times. Uh, there was a lot of problems with that. I'm, I'm so happy that Forge has their own energy system and it's going to get rid of a lot of these compatibility problems between all of the systems. Although technically IC2, if I recall right, has migrated their internal system to behave a little bit closer to RF just to fix those problems. But in order to all this, we have to make an EMP thing because I need to emphasize on the interference. So I am interference. Uh, I completely spelled that wrong. Let me, uh, I think I spelled that wrong. I'll check this real quick. Nothing wrong with uh, spell checking yourself on Google. It's actually a, a, a really good thing. I've been I've been told by people that it's a bad idea to spell check yourself. I'm like, no, it's a good thing. It shows that you're willing to improve. Uh, so we do that. So we got an interfer uh, interface. And literally what we want to do is go uh, public, or actually we don't even need that. So we want to uh, void on, on EM uh, applied. Electromagnetic on le electromagnetic uh, radiation applied, and then what we want to do is we we want to save people the headache, and we just simply want to go okay uh, int power. So we want to say okay, how much power is being applied? Because uh, the thing is. To do this properly, to be extremely realistic about this, we have to know a lot of knowledge. And even though I studied engineering for a couple of years, and then before that I spent two years as studying as an electronic, uh, electronics, 
Tricity Apprentice, um, I can't tell you how all this stuff works. I have enough of a grasp, but I know internally how it works. So I can go, okay, I know an EMP generates radiation and a whole bunch of other stuff, but I can't tell you if it works as a coil. Because what it does is it induces a current into the device and destroys the device that way, which is exactly the same as if you would take a couple copper coils and stick them next to each other. It's how a transformer works. They induce current in each other and they uh, separate. I need, I need a notepad for this. It's be so much easier if I draw. So like if, if we have a coil, so if we actually, is there a paintbrush? I remember this having a paintbrush. Aha. Uh -huh. So if we had a coil which went like this, which is how you draw a coil by the way in uh, schematics. I had a coil that did this and we had a coil over here that did this. And I put power through one coil. Say I put power, power through this one and say the power was going this way and it would come out this way of course, but um, you would generate so much power here and it would all, so all of a sudden induce a current on the coil over here so that way it's also now generating power. Actually, I think it's the opposite way. It's been so long since I've done this because uh, you get a magnetic coil fill that kind of does this thing and it goes like this, but it it goes out like this and it kind of wraps around both of them. So you generate a magnetic field that goes through here. It induces a current uh, via understanding what the induction power of each of the coils is. Uh, and then you induce that and you get at whatever frequency is so number of coils you have etc cetera, etc cetera. it's a lot of complex things and it's been so long since i've done it that i'm having trouble remembering it all but the what you're trying to go towards is you're trying to transfer x amount of power between one coil and the other and that's kind of how i imagine EMP working is that you're inducing a certain amount of power into the device and all we need to know is what the power is and we can calculate the power on our own uh, and what we can do come through here later is we go, okay, here's a simplified method. Here's how much power I am shitting into your device. And then we can create a, uh, a more complex method here that comes up here, which has got a default. And this would be um, double distance. Uh, and then we want I voltage transmitter object. Or I voltage transmitter. Uh, so we want to know the distance from our object. We want to know the, the transmitter. Uh, the transmitter is going to tell us what voltage he's emitting. So we want to go, and we're going to make this a default, by the way, because uh, I, I just assume everybody's going to just want an easy button this. Uh, get voltage, and this is just literally going to return 120. So 120 is like household voltage for people in the US. If you're in like Britain, it's 110. Uh, and then we, there's a few other things we want to do with this. Um, uh, get voltage hertz, which is going to be 60. And then the last one is we want to go is get power. So how much power is we doing? So get get total total uh, voltage power. Uh, and this this is definitely going to be a, a method that has to be implemented. So this is going to tell me what power is the device transmitting at all sides. Okay, so this would be refresh rate of power cycle. And this would be pressure of the power. That's kind of how this works. And then of course you would uh, you would also uh, extend um, I energy buffer provider. Um, theoretically, we would actually apply this to uh, the energy buffer object to kind of keep with our encapsulation. Um, I'll work on this. This is something I'm gonna to have to spend a huge amount of time toying with in order to do things. I don't wanna spend a huge amount of time on this video because the point is to try to show you guys how the EMP works, how I'm thinking about how EMP works. And everything else so what we're going to do with this is uh, with our default method is we're going to go okay think of how we want to apply it this will give um, a lot of control over how the EMP is applied and how we calculate power so what I want to do is I want to leave this calculation entirely up to the device even though theoretically the EMP is the one that's actually doing all this so this will give people the perfect thing and what we'll go is okay um, float or actually I want to do double power equals I voltage transmitter get total voltage power and 
there's a lot of stuff I want to implement here. So like I, I need to be implementing a coil type system where we go, okay, what's your frequency? What's your induction? What's your, there's a lot of math I could put in here. And the reality of it is you guys aren't going to get most of this. And I don't plan to expose you, you as guys as the user to a lot of this mathematics. I want to hide it behind uh, the functionality. So I want to go, okay, here's the EMP. Here's how it works. But from your guys' point of view, it turns a machine off. You guys don't need to know the math. You don't need to know how any of that works. I'm just going to tell you, okay, at this range, you can turn a machine off. At this range, it just damages the machine and stuff like that. Here's your percentile chances, everything else. But the reality is it's all code-based. And we want, I want to get as close to realistic functionality as possible. That way you guys have the best gameplay uh, advantage. Although I'm going to probably balance it out to a gameplay as well. So we get the power and what we want to do is we're going to go, okay, on electromagnet uh, do it, and we want to just go power divided by distance. So you want to assume that uh, one watt per distance is a good um, usage of our, our time and actually we're going to do a double here. And uh, rename this. This will be on electron uh, so I spelled, I think I spelled radiation wrong. So I think I just need the I here. Because it is electromagnetic radiation is, um, is how it's actually spelled, but this system doesn't actually understand that. I think I actually need a lowercase dm here. I think electromagnetic is all one word. Of course, I'm going to have to come over here and do that. Uh, you know, let's actually look this up. So electromagnetic oh yeah there's all one word electromagnetic spectrum this is what all radio waves pretty much transmit at is this what your how your router works it is spelled correctly but it looks like IntelliJ does not understand or not, does not have a reference to that word which is not surprising as IntelliJ doesn't have a lot of references uh, so this is um, called do you apply electromagnetic uh, interference to a device. Okay, um, I generate. I don't want overloads. What you're telling me that the word is spelled wrong, but you want me to generate overloads? That's not at all what I want to do. Uh, distance from source, and this is where somebody could also. Um, what is wrong with IntelliJ today? Typo in word distance. Look at this. Oh, come on, you. Yeah, so it's <laughs> IntelliJ is being really weird today. I know I'm misspelling words here, but uh, I'm trying to toy with IntelliJ to see what's why it's messing up. Uh, source of the energy. Uh, uh, double distance, double. Uh, strength. Actually, yes, we'll do this. Oh, what is the float? Float strength. And I think my IntelliJ is completely dripped out today. This does a happen occasionally. It's not a. I don't want to call it a weakness of the uh, software. It's because a lot of the IDEs I've used over my lifetime have all done this. They'll just occasionally decide they don't want to function anymore. Uh, how powerful. The uh, signal is calculated uh, via line of sight from the source. Uh, so I'm not going to let the uh, device calculate this. Uh, what I can do is uh, pass in some position checks and stuff to do this. Uh, so this will know where it's at, and then technically it can extract the position of the transmitter if it wanted to. So they can, if they didn't like the strength check here and they wanted to do their own strength check, they could do it. But I'm going to calculate this myself because it's going to be multi-threaded, and I want to make sure it stays that way. So that way the the EMP runs in a thread. It goes okay. I've line of sight checked for me and you, and I go okay. There's 30 stone blocks between me, so I have no power left. If it actually, if the strength ever goes to zero, it's just not going to even call this method. Um, to a device, use, uh, we'll use the, uh, the other method here, so on for external calls. This is, this is provided as a simple 
There we go. So we got our we got our version here, and we can actually make our capability system as I'm thinking about it. So I was talking about earlier. I didn't want to actually do the capability system, but I have an ideal. Uh, so how the capability system really works is that you create essentially a capsule uh, class that has the item stack built into it, along with any other data you need. Uh, we can do that. We actually have the ability to uh, modify the behavior based on what we're doing and make it function theoretically. I'm, as I say that, I'm going to revisit that later because I know how to make it work, but there's a ton of supporting code I'm going to have to make for it. And it's the same amount of code that is required to just use the capability system in the newer version. This is kind of like one of those things where I keep thinking, maybe I just want to go to 1.12 and stay there because trying to make this work in 1.7 and 1.12 at the same time is going to be really, really struggling. So we got we got our we got our interface at least. Uh, now we just have to make another version for the item over here. So we come back down here. We go okay uh, interface item, and then we just come down okay. Here's your item stack. So you know what we're doing. And we come down here to go okay. Here's your item stack, and it tells us kind of what we wanted to do. Uh, we pass the stack in. Now the trick with an item is you do need more information. And we want to make sure we put the item stack into this. So I kind of need overloads for this. Why did, oh yeah, there it goes, it works. So I need to know who's holding the item. Is it in their hand or is it in their backpack? Uh, what slot it's in. So I need to make another version of this guy with more information. And this is an example of where the capability system wouldn't really work for this application. And uh, yeah, so we'll do this. Uh, so we got item stack. Uh, we want to know the slot and we want to know the player. So entity, player, player, and then slot, and then. Uh, Yeah, we'll do it that way. And then how this is going to work is uh, go on electromagnetic radiation call. We'll just pass in the normal data, strength, and high voltage transmitter. Why did I mess up with this? Oh, wait, we didn't need a slot. That's what I messed up on. So we get our call here, and this is pretty much exactly the same as the previous call. We just have more information we need. And we need to pass the item stack in all these two. So I parameter stack item. You could do the capability system for this. I'm not saying you couldn't. Uh, there are some details I think I need to go research in order to understand how the capability system would actually work. Um, actually, this needs to be an entity. This actually needs to be an entity, so uh, entity holding the item, and at param slot, uh, location in inventory. And then uh, we could do a boolean to say, okay, it's held, so boolean held, and then I don't know why distance just failed. Yeah, I, I, I feel like after I do this video, I'm going to definitely restart my workspace. Uh, is the item held. So that will save me some trouble. And then what this allows me to do, so say I make a laser gun as an item and a player's holding it and I get hit by an EMP. What I could go, okay, if it's in my inventory, the gun's damaged. But if the gun is currently held and I'm squeezing the trigger down, the gun could explode. 
So there is different behavioral logic of being able to pass in the entity, the slot, is it held and stuff like that. That gives you more options. Uh, when you're designing APIs like this, you want to try to give as many options as possible without going overboard. There are times when you need to understand that uh, I can theoretically figure out just based off of these two, is the item held? So I don't, I don't need to include that. The only reason I'm including that is to save myself a little bit of effort. I don't need to know the exact details of certain items. Uh, I just need the minimum. So you supply enough information to meet the minimum requirement of necessity. You don't go overboard because as long as I can retrieve information, so for example, this thing right here, I can get the voltage, hertz, and power. So I don't need to pass any of that stuff in. I just need to know, okay, what's transmitting the voltage and how far away am I from it? Theoretically, distance could be calculated, but you don't want to recalculate this repeatedly. So say, for example, the player had like 90 items in his inventory that could all be EMP'd. You don't want to be recalculating distance every single time. So calculating distance once and passing it is a good idea. Uh, so we got all this. This now gives us the ability to EMP items, which we do need, so uh, that's useful. And uh, we have the ability to EMP the tiles, so now we have that. So we just need to get uh, our EMP in ICBM, which we have here, and we need to more or less recode it. So let's see. I'm actually going to recode the EMP completely for ICBM. And this is pretty much what we're going to get into. I am going to cut this video right here, and then the next video we'll go ahead and get started on that because we're already at like 50 minutes, and we're just going to use this as uh, the theory behind the MP video or something. I'll, I'll figure out a title when I upload it.